What's up, people? You know I had to talk about this one. Obviously, this is a Seahawks channel. I needed to get all the Seahawks stuff out first, but there's no way I'm not going to address this because this is big, and quite frankly, it shocks me. So, last night on Instagram, Michael Penix Jr. made a big announcement. He is returning for the 2023 season. He is not going to go into the NFL. He's not declaring for the draft. He's going to continue his college football career, play his senior season, and come what may for the rest of his football playing life. So I'm shocked. I did not think this was, I mean, I thought he was going to think about it, of course, but I didn't think he was actually going to do it. And you read the the uh, thing that he posted on Instagram. It sounds like he really loves being here. He really loves playing for DeBoer. And he he just wants to finish the job. It really sounds like he would feel unsatisfied if he left the Huskies, left college football without making a playoff berth, without winning the conference, without, you know, doing something bigger than what we did this year, which was really good. 10-win season, going to, uh, by the way, the Alamo Bowl, which is now official. Um, it's a good year. He had a great year. He, his stats are awesome. The way he played in almost every game this year was... I wasn't expecting him to be this good. I knew he was going to be good, but I didn't expect this. It sounds like he just wants a chance at winning the conference and making the playoff. So, you kind of have to take him seriously, don't you? He's leaving millions of dollars on the table subjecting himself to another 13, 14, maybe 15 games where he could get injured. And we know that Penix is a guy who's gotten injured before in his college football career. And he's saying, I'm coming back, even though I just had this incredible year where my draft stock is probably as high as it's going to be. And I'm only going to get older, right? Like every year I play college football means another year older I am that makes me less appealing as a pro prospect. And yet here we are. So, he's back, and I think this changes things dramatically for the way this upcoming UW season should look. I also think it means you might see more players returning to the Huskies in 2023 than we thought. Our receivers, for instance, McMillan and Odunzi. You gotta figure those guys are gonna f stick around, because I don't think Penix would stick around if he thought he was gonna lose his top receivers, because those guys are really good. And there's no guarantee you're going to be able to replace them with guys who are just as good if they leave. So it seems like that's also going on. And at this point, you add all this stuff together, you assume the defense is going to get at least a little bit better because it was it was mostly bad this year. And usually, just by a routine recruiting class, you're able to bring in a little bit more stuff. You're going to have players that don't declare for, def for on defense because they didn't play great this year. They're going to come back. They're going to have another year experience. They're going to try to build actual draft credibility. This UW team is, I don't know if they're going to be Pac-12 favorites, but I feel like they're playing the best of any Pac-12 team right now. And they, with Penix, with these receivers, with some of these uh, guys on offense who can stay back, if they do stay back, this is going to be a team that is right there with USC and Oregon for the uh, Pac-12 title. And quite frankly, I don't fully understand what's going on over there in Oregon, but it seems like we might have a leg up there. I don't know what's going on with Bo Nix. I don't know what's going on with their quarterback spot. I know they had a guy hit the uh, transfer portal already. So I, I'm feeling good about this 2023 season. And not to look a gift horse in the mouth. Because th this is great, right? I like Heward. I like Sam Heward. I like what he can do, what I think he'll be able to do in college football. But there's no doubt that if you take a look at the season Penix just had, like you're not just going to replace this automatically. The 4,400 yards. And he hasn't even played his bowl game yet. You're probably looking at what you're, I guess I would say against that Texas defense, maybe you could give him like up to 4,600, 4,650 Probably going to get 30 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 66% completion, a little bit of a threat with his legs. Like, I, I, again, 
I'm not upset about this. Of course, this is awesome, but that is a heck of a season. It, it takes some real courage to believe that you're going to be able to equal or top that in 2023. Because you got to figure Penix's draft stock is as high as it's ever been right now. Is he going to be able to make it go higher next year, knowing that he's going to be a year older, knowing that he might get hurt, knowing that any dip in play, any bad game, any game where he comes up short and disappoints, because you know we're going to get some primetime games next year, any of that stuff, your draft stop takes a hit. And Penix is already a little bit of a limited prospect because he doesn't have an amazing arm. He doesn't have amazing mobility. He's left-handed, which some teams are not going to like. So this is a risk he's taking. And I'm happy he's taking it. But looking at this stuff right here, looking at the season he just had, I am a little bit shocked by it. As of right now, I feel like Penix is either a third or fourth round pick. That would be my guess. Possible, I have the room completely misread here, and he could be a first round pick or a seventh round pick. I've seen a wide range of takes on Penix's pro prospects, but I feel like he's going to be third or fourth. Does he feel like he can improve on that? You're going to have to have a healthy, clean, productive year, but obviously he loves this system, he loves this offense, and... He bets on himself, which I can respect that. So that's another quarterback off the board for the Seahawks, by the way, for those of you who were maybe looking at it from that angle. But um, least of my concerns right now, because we've got a big-time quarterback going into the 2023 season now. He will be on the Heisman watch list for sure, and the Huskies are going to be on the playoff watch list now. I feel really confident about that. In the coming Months, we're going to learn about which players on Washington are declaring for the draft. If he loses a bunch of his receivers and offensive linemen, that would surprise me because I would assume he knows something. But for the moment, it looks good for this Huskies team. And this 10-win team this year, 2023, we get good health. We get good fortune with health. Maybe you're talking 11 wins, win the Pac-12, Cruise on over to the playoff. First time in the playoff since 2016. I mean, hey, got to be on the table. And a uh, quick little footnote, by the way, it is confirmed we are playing in the Alamo Bowl Thursday, December 29th. So that's a few days before the Rose Bowl. Obviously, I mean, sorry, it, it is a disappointment. It is a disappointment to not get the Rose Bowl when you are all squared up for it. But the Alamo Bowl is a good bowl, and Texas is a good football team. We can prove something if we handle things over in the Alamo. So I will be live streaming this game, or, well, a watch along. So keep an eye out for it on uh, December 29th. All right. So Penix is back in 2023. Big news. I'm excited to see who else stays. But right now, this 2023 Husky season is shaping up to be something really, really nice. All right, catch y'all later. Bow down to Washington and probably no Huskies videos until we get to the Alamo Bowl. See you then.